the next segment of our show, luckily for me, who, who I, I'm still a little bit new to the camera, I like to talk to the guys that have been there from the start. And so, as we come back from this next clip, we're going to be joined by Mr. Tim Smith, Canon's consultant to Hollywood professionals with regard to C500s. All right, welcome back, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that stuff. This is, uh, this is put out by the Cinema EOS professionals who are shooting. Well, well, Mr. Tim Smith, what is being shot presently on the C500? On the C500? Uh, well, it's a new camera. OK. Um, so we're, it's just really hitting the marketplace. But like that, uh, um, it's a lot, there's a lot of testing going on at the moment. Uh -huh. um, there is one, that, one sh film that we can talk about called Need for Speed. It's a, it's a um, Spielberg production being shot by Shane Hurlbut, which is a big action-y film, and they're currently shooting like correct right now and using a considerable amount of C500 and 1DCs. Okay. So that'll be, I don't know when that comes out, actually, um, but they're in production now on that. It's a so huge the, budget film. The C500 shares the chip with the C300. And the 100, same sensor. And the 100. What, uh, what are we watching on TV that's, put out, that's shot on the C300? 300 is quite a bit. As a B camera, tons of stuff. The NCIS, both of them, uh, LA and regular one. Uh, Blue Blood is using it quite a bit. Um, uh, let's see what else. If we've got um, Portlandia, one of my favorite shows. Portlandia. Went to see, went to see 300 this as year. As their A camera. As their A camera, yes. It's okay. the camera on that one as well. Um, Grimm uses a little bit too. You start to see more and more. I mean, I've got sort of this eye for it, so I'm watching TV and I go, that's my camera. Okay. I can tell, especially when it's cut in as a B. And so you personally have a, a special role. So you're employed by Canon, but I, where, where, do, you, where I, do you spend your days? Um, all over the place. Okay. Uh, I am. I'm an advisor, actually, not a consultant. So I'm, a, I'm an advisor, Very which good. means pro, sort of the same thing, except I'm full time. I've been with Canon for about 23 years now. Um, and right now, the job is actually very cool. It's, it's trying to get a good foothold in this film and television market for these new products, for our cinema products. So we'll spend a lot of time on sets, a lot of time uh, in pre-production meetings, a lot of time speaking to DPs and producers um, who want to use the product and have to understand the workflow. Not just the uh, editing workflow, but the on-set workflow. How do you build it out? How do you get it on a shoulder? How do you do a studio rig? What, just like the questions we were getting before, what drive would I record if I wanted to get to 48 frames? Now what do I need? Uh, what don't I need? So it's this, One question we had coming uh, in from the internet during the clip was, what is the data rate when we're pushing out 4K RAW? Um, yeah. um, it's it, at 24 frames a second. You're talking about a terabyte an hour. So, a so terabyte that would be per what's hour. the math on that? A lot. It's about a million billion, as it turns out. Yeah, yeah. Out. It, it's a lot. I mean, at this point, we don't even talk about per, per second. Okay. We got to get to a number we can wrap our head around. We have to do an hour. So it's a terabyte an hour of footage. And so that's coming in a raw. We're using what Canon's S log for color fall off. C log actually. C -log. Excuse me. C log. C -log. Yeah. S log is three more. That's someone else. So yeah, yeah, that is. That, that starts. Is. With I'll an let S. you guess. So, okay. But, uh, so when you've got all this C log footage, at, uh, a terabyte for each hour, what are some of the workflows people are using to do color correction, dailies? Can you just spout off a couple manufacturers or, or software vendors that you're? Color, color flow is big. We've used color flow a lot. Color flow. Um, they're, they're, they've, they've been really great. Um, there's a, there's a lot. It actually kind of goes more towards the the post house that you would get your your onset dailies from your DIT. Okay. What are they going to use? And, and and it's really important that if you're getting into the 4K workspace and you're going to shoot a 4K film, then you have to go shop them before you shoot. Very good. You got to go to Photochem. You got to go to Technical. You got to go to these bigger houses and say, what type of files do you need? How do we deliver? What are you going to use them for? Essentially, though, the workflow on on set would be shoot your 20 minutes or so, whatever you're going to get on a drive, depending on the recorder, get that pack off to a, to a DIT who has an on-set workstation, who then reassembles the clips from RAW to actual workable files. And that takes time. It's sure. a lot of data. I mean, yeah. you're thinking maybe 
20 minutes, I would give the DIT 90 minutes to get that drive fresh and ready to go back in again. Okay. And then he'll store everything or she'll store everything on, on good sized drives and then off to the color house and so they have a file structure they can start working with. Now your, uh, your cameras and your chips have been crit critically acclaimed. Some of your clients are giving you awards. Tell me about we that. We are the sensor itself. We picked up an Emmy, a technical Emmy, which uh, you know almost one, just barely a year into this business. And Emmy. we got to pick up an Emmy. All right. um, yeah, it's shiny and it's nice and it's very right. cool. And I don't think it's our last one either. Hopefully not. But to get one this quickly is, is a huge uh, pat on the back from the industry. Great. And then just recently, a couple of weeks ago, we were with the uh, Society of Camera Operators at their, their awards and picked up the Technical Achievement of the Year Award from the operators. And that one means a lot to us too because that's not just about the image that gets on screen. You don't really judge that by the tech specs. You judge that by the first ACs and the operators and the people that have to know where the buttons are and where do you push and how do I make it work and, and how easy is it on set. And we picked up that award as well. So that's a big deal for us too. So, so before you've got to go, give me an example, give me one anecdote where you were on set or advising somebody on set where they had a problem to solve and but for the versatility of the, of the Cinema EOS line, they couldn't have gotten it done. You know, actually I'll go back to your earlier segment. I just got back from uh, Japan. Okay. And we were working on a film with a director named James Murphy, a musician, and it, you guys will get to see it in September. But the storyline called for shooting on an airplane, and you've mentioned airplane. Mm -hmm. So they rented a row of seats, and we shot on the way over in the actual commercial During flight. a commercial flight? During a commercial flight. I mean, Did we, you pull a permit? We didn't even ask. Um, <laughs> but you don't, I'm not saying that Canon makes the camera that doesn't require the permits. That's not our, <laughs> that's not our new tagline. But... You know, we were able to shoot what we needed all in this long flight over. Um, you know, and it's, it was a very friendly airline. I, mean, I don't want to throw out any plugs, but you know, we would even get the they even got the the, um, the stewardesses or the flight attendants to you know bring the cart by just at the right time and kind of do that. Cool. They were everybody was kind of very into it that was in that section. So I imagine um, that was a, a small build yeah. We up of stripped the it, we stripped it down to our cine lenses uh -huh. and a handheld rig uh -huh. and shot you know available light you know and. And, and got it. I mean, it, it wasn't a lot of dialogue. It was a more reaction to a kid in a seat and things like that. But able to shoot that on the way over, and then when we got to Japan, shot on a shot on a train the same way. So cool. Um, you know, so it's it's the size makes a big difference. That couldn't have happened on a conventional camera. Understood. Well, so. we really appreciate you being able to come all the way out oh, here, yeah. spend great. a little time with Love us, and, and and share the tech with us. Yeah, Mr. Tim Smith, everybody. Oh, before we go. Yes. We've got a few questions for you coming in from the internet. Oh, here comes a good okay, part. Okay, we have a very, some very technical questions. One is, what about 444 12-bit at ProRes? What would the... What would okay, so the camera itself is putting out a RAW. So what they're asking is, what can I record that to? What do I need? Now, to get 12-bit, you're in 2K mode. In 4K mode, your maximum bit depth is going to be 10. Uh, as far as recording ProRes, Right now, the best option is right around the corner. It would probably be the AJA recorder. Oh, it's the Pix so, 240, dude. But, is that, but that's not going to get me 2K. So It's not going to get me 4K either. Presently, so, before you need to record 2K or 4K, right. if you were satisfied with 1920 by 1080, where I'd say 95% of our television... I, I would agree with that, too, but the specific question was ProRes, and that's if they really have to have ProRes, then they got to wait for a ProRes recorder. So the Pix240 records ProRes 4444. Right. 4, 4, 4. Right. And at 2K. And at 1920 by 10. But not at 4. So that's the only, the only difference is if you've got Understood. to get to 4. If you've got to get to 4. Very good. So if you don't have to get to 4, actually, that's a really good choice. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Way to play along. What's our next one? Okay. Um, does it have a way to monitor 4K output? Um, no, but nobody else really does that. You're monitoring a 1920. You have multiple outputs. But to monitor 4K, say, on set, you'd have to have a 4K monitor which is not an easy thing to find and it's very price prohibitive. So you know, very few people would do that. If in fact you did have a 4K monitor and you really had to see it that way, there will be options that are gonna do a 4K pass through probably NAB-ish time at this point. But right now, not, yeah, I think you'll hear announcements about that. But really no 4K camera is really, uh, no 4K workflow really needs you to do that. Such a huge expense to do we'll just take to that see as it a yes. before. So, but I think it's coming. I think it's coming. Fantastic. So. Yeah, a 4K monitor right now is 25 grand. So if you can put up the money for that, we will get you a 4K monitoring solution. Yeah, it won't be, and it won't be long before that'll be an easy enough connection. Um, interesting. I mean, kind of to side note a little bit. I mean, we have been doing some testing with Major League Sports, uh -huh. and they're looking for that 4K output. So there's some prototype stuff that they're looking at, so they can send a live 4K image to a truck and use it for um, instant replay, digital zoom, and just pull right Check in. I mean, the toes if you're right, if you're on, if you're watching Fox, you're looking at 720. 
So when you've got 4K worth Fox. of data and you're going to 720, you could, you got plenty of space to pull into a 720. So I think we may change the future of instant replay with these kind of things. Fantastic. So. We got anything else for Mr. Smith? It was fantastic to have you in the in the studio. We really appreciate Anytime. you taking the time. Anytime. Thank you so much. Okay. Come Thanks. see us again. I will. All I right, will. Tim Smith.